Hi knitters, welcome back to Aro Knits and Pearls. I'm your host, Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. As always, you can find my Ravelry, Instagram, Ko-Fi, Patreon, linked in the description below, as well as links to any dyers, makers, and designers that I talk about in this episode. Um, I know I took a little longer um, from my last episode. I wanna apologize, because I did commit to you guys that I would do this every two weeks, and everybody's been super supportive and understanding. Um, but I had a lot of stuff come up and I just needed a little bit of a break, but I'm feeling much, much better. Thank you guys so much. And we're ready to get into it. Um, this is a very special episode because I'm recording this the day that one of my best friends, Andrea, the knitting PT gets into town and we are so excited. Ah! <laughs> We're so excited. I'm like actually giddy. Um, but before I get into that, I will talk about everything. <laughs> I'm surrounded by yarn, you guys. I should really do like a picture of what is surrounding me because it's it's truly staggering. Um, okay, so I will first, as always, talk about what I'm wearing. What I'm wearing is part of um, Andrew's visit. We all decided as friends to do a Moonset tea or pullover. So the Moonset series is by Ozetta. I've talked about this before because I was in the original Testament group, but the Moonset pullover tea, Moonset anything is one of my favorite, favorite designs that I've ever knit. And that's saying a lot. Um, I cannot gush about this pattern enough. And I know you guys have heard this a million times already by now, but I don't care because I need to talk about it, okay? Okay, so this is in the colorway Nutcracker by Explorer Knits and Fibers. Um, it is a perfect colorway, first off. The colorway, it's this bl like blend between brown, pink, but it's perfect, it's perfect. It, it looks so dressed up and I love that I paired this really classy colorway with this really classy design because it's so appropriate for the office. It's really easy to dress up or down. I'm wearing it right now with just some blue jeans, but if I wear it with a black skirt, it instantly becomes professional appropriate. I just, I cannot talk about how much I love this pattern enough. Okay, but the pattern itself you see um, it has this little fold over neckline and it is a v-neck but it doesn't go too deep depending on how you want to slouch it it can go you know up or down um, but I really love the versatility of it it looks so clean the finishes are so neat it is top down but almost seamless pretty much seamless because the only like it's hard to explain now that I have it actually on but you start from the back and I don't recommend this for beginner knitters because the, how the back neck band is worked and how you increase, it's gonna require you to juggle a lot in your head. There's a neck band that has to be done ribbed. It's a ribbing band done separately. And then you pick up stitches, you do short rows, you cast on. It's just, it's a lot for a beginner knitter. I don't recommend it for beginner knitters um, unless you are just one of those, like I'm just gonna throw myself into it and figure it out until I do. Like I've met people like y'all I don't understand you guys because I, there was no way I could tackle something like this um, when I first started knitting, but I have met knitters like, it, like that. So don't let my generalization stop you if you are one of those people. Um, yeah, but this design, it's amazing. Um, you pick up for the sleeves after you join on the body, you finish the body, you know, there's an I-cord edging on the very bottom. So it's a very clean finish. If you don't wanna do the I-cord edging, you could always do a rib to match this part um, because this is a rib. Um, you could always do a rib, a folded over neck, a uh, folded over hem. I've thought about doing a folded over hem, but I decided this time to do an I-cord because the sleeves are done in an I-cord. Again, you could choose to do ribbing, folded over hem, whatever you like, but I just, the last time I did this, I did an I-cord and I really liked how it looked. The only modification I made is that I cinched in the sleeves. I did this in the test knit that I did too. I just um, knit one, knit two together, knit one, knit two together, all the way around when I was ready to bind off. And I love the length. It's perfect because of how slouchy this is. It is just where I like it, which is pretty much right at the wrist for me. Um, because uh, I know that knits tend to grow and I often pull down my sleeves like this and I can 
because it's cinched, I can roll it up and it stays rolled up. And that's why I like cinched sleeves. Um, but I just, I cannot say enough how much I love this, but I'm gonna keep doing it because I love this so much that actually, since I said Andrea, Megan, and I did this as a friend group, we all were like, is it wrong of me to want to do a million other moon sets? And if it's wrong, we're all gonna be wrong together because I literally have next to me, these are the other four moon sets I have planned. I have four moon sets planned. Um, they're all in EKF because I did the one I'm wearing in EKF, Exploring Knits and Fibers, and her DK base, I've talked about it before, and for those of you guys who watch every episode of mine, you're gonna be like, when is Aro ever gonna say anything new? And um, probably never, because I, I know what I like, and I like Allie's DK base. EKF's DK base is thinner than other DKs. It is 274 yards per 100 grams, or one skein. One skein is 100 grams. So 274 yards is roughly 24 yards more than the base DK that most other dyers use. So it is thinner. And I am obsessed with this drape. Like I just, it, it hits on gauge, pattern gauge perfectly. At least for me, you know, everybody's gauge is different. So don't be basing your gauge off of mine. Um, but for me, I hit gauge every time I, I just love this. And I also love how twisty it is. Like the stitches, you guys, the stitches look so neat and clean. I love this thing so much. Okay, so this, it's one of my favorite bases to work with and EKF's base, like, so I want a green one in fur because I have a lot of dark forest green. I love dark forest green. I have this, which I normally don't do golds very often because of how dangerous it can be with my Asian skin tone. Um, but I think this actually, because it skews so warm, like it doesn't make me look jaundiced, which is a nice, nice go. Um, but this is the colorway Butternut. This is the colorway Redwoods, and it's this gorgeous orangey red. Definitely skews more red than orange, but it is so good. And this little curiosity is my Guinness from her Ireland collection. So my Guinness is very interesting because it is blackish purple, brownish. Like it's supposed to look like Guinness, you know, from the Ireland collection. Um, but it really is the most versatile color. And I think it's gonna be a really great neutral to have in my wardrobe because I don't have um, a lot of dark, like dark black, dark gray sweaters in my repertoire. And I really want to Im increase that amount. Um, but yeah, these are the incredible colors I want all in moon sets. I just want a wardrobe of moon sets. And Allie, if you ever watch my videos or if, if y'all wanna bother Allie and ask, can she please do a white? Like, I know everybody's gonna be like, oh, but what about linen? Linen's a neutral. Like I have linen, I love linen. I'm actually working with it right now on this, but I'll tell you guys about that in a moment. But linen is not white. It's just off, like it's it's too warm, it's too grayish. Like this is linen on Surrey. And it's very close to what it looks like on DK, which I realize I just have lying around elsewhere, but it's not white. I want a white. I want a white and I want it in her base. It is very important to me that I have them all in Allie's base okay so ali if you could do me a solid please create a white please and thank okay all right so that's the moon sets i'm wearing it now i'm obsessed can't wait to make more probably by the end of the year i'll be talking about my year of moon sets and it'll just be this um okay i'm just again throwing yarn on the ground because there's just so much around me um there's a lot of whips, there's a lot of yarn because it's been three weeks since I talked to you guys and I've been accumulating a lot, okay? So I beg your patience and we'll figure this out as we go. Okay, so another whip that I've been working on, well, I'll talk about the one I showed you. So this one, I told you guys last time that I was gonna cast this on and I did and I've been working on it off and on. Um, things have been moving very quickly on it, which I've been very pleased about because it is, using, I think I used a US 10. Yeah, this is US 10. 
um, on the body and sleeves. Uh, the ribbing, I used a US 7, but this is Community Cozy by Alicia Plummer, Community Cozy. And it is the pullover version of her Community Cozy cardigan. And I am obsessed. Like these, the texture of this, like it, it's just so good. It's so good, you guys. Okay, this uses Film Out by Hawari Bazaar Co. I showed you guys it last time, but it has this like pinkish gray tone to it with speckles and held with Explorer Knits Surrey in the colorway linen. Like you can see the speckling here. It's really beautiful. And there's this great like color variation that's very subtle, very subtle. And I love, I just love how um, from bottom to top, the ribbing just flows. And it was a little bit more, it's, it's more involved than most of my other knits because most of my knits I'd like top down, seamless, you know? But this one, because it's bottom up, um, she has written the pattern to be seamed. However, you can do what I did and just cast on the total amount in the round minus four stitches because she, she includes one stitch each side of laying flat for a selvage edge for the, uh, for the seaming. So if you minus that, two stitches on, e on each, you know, front and back, so four total, you subtract four to your total stitch count, and then you just cast that on in the round, and you just work in the round. And uh, that's what I did, and I love it. I love this thing. I, it was a challenge, like I said, for someone who prefers mindless knits, especially when I got to the shaping part of it. But I'm really glad that I did stick with it because I, I love how this looks now. Like you can see here, there's a lot of shaping that goes on front and back to get that little swoop. Actually, it would be really cute if you, like, if I was the person who was inclined to do that, I would just um, knit the body, seam the top. I did a three needle bind off, but she does write for it to be seamed. Um, you can do a three needle bind off, it's fine. I just, I like the way that it looks and I hate seaming actually. Like I hate really seaming. So this is as close as I get. Um, but you could leave it as a vest and it'd be really cute. I just, I love the texture. I've been really drawn towards textural things these days, especially knitting. Um, and I just, I cannot get over how cute it looks when the ribs just move together all throughout the whole piece. And I know it's just a simple thing, but for me, that's one of the visual elements that I was completely drawn to when I saw her sample. And that's why I applied and I just, I love it so much. Um, as you can see, I'm almost done with the first sleeve. So I think this will move very quickly. It does move very quickly because um, to get on gauge, I used US 10s, like I said. So she wrote the pattern for, you know, those unspun yarns. Um, she wrote the pattern for unspun yarn held double, but I was able to achieve gauge, no issue with a regular DK. So around 250 yards per skein and a strand of Surrey. Um, so I achieved gauge, it has a lovely drape and the stitches look so good. I love the texture, ah. But yeah, so I'm really happy with this and I think I will be done very, very soon. Um, not soon enough for Andrea. I mean, maybe Sunday? I only have her for 48 hours. So I'm like, how fast can I knit in 48 hours? Um, we'll see. I don't think it's gonna happen, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so that's one that's almost done and I'm really excited for it. Uh, the other thing that I'm working on, so we have all as a group, Andrea, Megan and I, we've decided as a group to cast on the morning ritual tea so the morning ritual tea is um, by Olga Putano. She's a lovely lady. I met her at Vogue Knitting Live for the first time and she's so sweet. She actually has a book out um, that's called Only Yoking, like only yoking, yoke like a, like a sweater yoke. Um, I'll link it in the description below. So she has a new book out. I haven't gotten the book yet, but she has a lot of designs in it that I'm really excited about. I just, I'm trying to not do as many top down in the in the round yokes because that's all I do. Um, so this is a tee and this again is bottom up. It 
uses summer summer weight fibers because as a tea she wanted it to be more lightweight which i'm totally on board for because it is warming up so quickly in salt lake i was not expecting i thought we would have a spring spring lasted like maybe three days and then suddenly it was 85 degrees and i'm like what's going on anyway i don't want to talk about the weather it's making me angry um so it's using summer fibers if this looks if this colorway looks familiar to my longtime viewers it's because this is knitting for olive um sunflower knitting for olive sunflower i'm pretty sure it's sunflower um and it's from my tank top that i did last year i talked about it in last episode maybe it was the episode before but i don't like tank tops and i've come to accept this um I can wear tank tops if like I'm planning on wearing a jacket over it but the problem is with the tank top that I had made it had these really lovely beautiful bows on it like really big on the shoulder and they look so cute but I realized it made it difficult to wear a jacket comfortably so and I'm I don't like the way that my arms look it's just a personal thing so I decided to just undo it all and reclaim the yarn and so that's what I'm doing here it is so knitting for olive pure silk um knitting for olive pure silk is fingering weight the pattern calls for dk um I just held it double and I used the needles that were recommended and I'm right on gauge um it's just two color color work. I haven't gotten to the color work portion. It's it's a really beautiful block of it in the middle and it's a very bold geometric pattern. And I'm so excited to show you guys more because I really like fell in love with this design as, I so, as soon as I saw it. Um, but the other colorway that I will be using is from Gregoria Fibers. Yeah, this is Gregoria Fibers. I used it last year. I have a bunch left over from the knit that I had it for. Um, so this is also a summer fiber. This is 70% cotton, 30% merino, which I love that balance. Um, it's just natural cotton merino, like it's really beautiful. And this colorway, I think it was called stone. Yeah, stone. And it's just this lovely dove warm gray. And I think held with the gold, it will look really, really nice. I'm really excited to show you guys more of this as it works out because it really is just a stunning design and hopefully we will all finish um, by the end of the summer, fingers crossed, but I'm, I'm very excited. We're all going to work on it together. Like that was, we knew we wouldn't be done by the time Andrea came into town because we had all done the moonset on a pretty short timeline. So we knew we wouldn't be done with, with the morning ritual. But we decided, like, wouldn't it be nice if we were all working on the same thing? Like, so that's what that's happening. Um, and again, I'm just gonna throw yarn on the ground. I'll pick it up later. Um, please know that after my videos, I have to spend like a good 20 minutes reorganizing my yarn because I've just been like tossing it about here, here and there and dither and everywhere. Um, another thing you guys have seen, but I have made some progress on. Not as much as I would like, but I have been knitting a lot of other stuff, so that's why. Um, this is the Clove Sweater by Rachel Kurihara. Um, I'm knitting this in Passion Knits yarn and Scranton Stitcher. I've talked about it a couple episodes, so you guys should be familiar if you've watched, but um, the Clove Sweater by Rachel Kurihara is also one of my favorite patterns possibly of all time like it definitely ranks top five along with moonset definitely top five ever um just the fit is mwah on me like hmm. um so yes so this is my hot pink sweater i actually think of my mom a lot when i wear this because she always she loved me in hot pink loved me in hot pink and she always wanted to wear it too and she'd be like no i just don't look good in it i was like mom what are you talking about we literally look like the same person i just like with shorter hair i am my mom like i swear um but uh so i i wanted to make a hot pink sweater and i finally this is my challenge to myself this year i have joined the body um so it's now that point i love which is just mindless mindless and meditative that's what i'm looking for a lot um but again i'm trying to challenge myself a little bit more these days but yeah so this is the progress on that 
Um, I'm very excited with how it's going, even though it's a slower pace than I normally like. I really have grown to appreciate the idea of just making for making sake instead of, no, I need this to be done. Um, it's it's healthy for me to kind of take that step back and enjoy the process instead of the product, right? So that's the progress on that. Um, a impulse cast on I had. So if you guys watched my stories, I impulsively decided to cast on a blanket. And I have not knit a blanket in years, basically. I went through a phase where I knit a ton of blankets and I actually still have a few, so I realize now I should probably, next episode, next episode, I will show you guys the blankets I've knit that I still have. Um, but this one is based on the Pocket Full of Posy blanket by Pearl Soho. So Pocket Full of Posy, the only, the reason I say based on, Pocket Full of Posy by Pearl Soho recommends using their yarn, obviously, but a sport weight yarn. I am using, fingering weight yarn. And if you're trying to figure out how these colors work, that's because I'm doing two color brioche. So brioche is reversible and it isn't fingering weight. And for those of you who don't, haven't done brioche before, it can be a little time consuming. It moves a little bit slow. Um, I don't mind it, however, because again, I've been thinking to myself, like I really wanna make just to enjoy the process. And for me, brioche, I've only done one other time on one sweater, the James and Watts uh, Earth and Air sweater. I really want to get more comfortable with doing brioche, especially on more complicated sweaters. So I decided to challenge myself and really cast on something that I knew would take probably years to finish. And that's what this is. So I am using all the colorways that I have from Witchfire Fibers, um, Home for the Holidays collection. So this was her holiday collection from 2022, last year. Um, the main color is this, Fractals. It's basically a white with just the faintest speckles of blue. And the color you see here, the dark green, is called Verdant. And the other colors, I've shown you guys this before, but in case you forgot, this is how it's gonna go. So we have the darkest one. I, I don't even know that I can hold these. And this is why I don't show you guys a full sweater quantity because I'm like this. Okay, so it goes really dark here and then it's gonna fade lighter and then go, go to the warm color and then lighter and then go back to dark. And I'm really excited with how these look together. I think you guys will agree it looks stunning like this. Um, this is how she had it laid out in uh, the photo for this collection. And I am normally not inclined to buy single skeins like ever. But when I saw these laid out like that, I was like, oh yeah, this is the one. This is the one. Like, look at it. It just looks so good. <sighs> yeah, I'm... I'm so obsessed and I cannot wait to keep doing this. Like it's really so meditative and I've, I have gotten a lot of brioche practice obviously from doing it, but like sometimes I haven't messed up on the brioche yet, but what happened was on like way further down, I saw that I had split the yarn because I'm using actually lace tips. They are very sharp. Um, Lace tips, by the way, if you want to travel with your knitting, I do not recommend bringing lace tip um, needles because they do often stop you, at least the, the TSA, the US, you know, security, airport security, they will stop you if you have lace knit. That has been my experience. I'm not gonna say every agent is gonna stop you, but there are many who will be like, no, you can't bring those. So there was one time that I was traveling and I had to literally like take it off my needles, throw the, like, I wasn't gonna ship my needles. Um, so I threw the needles away and just had to go home with a project on nothing. So not the best situation. Um, so if you're planning on traveling, I do not recommend lace tips, but um, they were the only pair that I had in this um, 
in this size that were free and long enough because it's, it's quite long. Um, yeah, so even though Pearl Soho, like because they recommend using a sport weight, I just cast on a lot more stitches. The only thing with um, which I call brioche, it has to be an odd number. Um, and then what other thing did I do different? Oh yeah, even though they, okay, so they recommend you use sport weight and then size US2, which is very small. I'm doing fingering weight, but on a bigger needle. I'm using US threes, which are just a bit bigger. Um, I find that it doesn't hurt my hands yet, <laughs> but there were a couple, there were a couple weeks where my work situation, like my work setup, just was so uncomfortable. And I don't know, I didn't know this was true until just very recently, but age is a real thing. And it hit me like a train because when I was younger, I worked in situations, you know, ergonomic situations that did not suit my body at all. I'm five foot tall, one on a really good day if I do yoga the night before, stretch the morning of, and then measure myself. Yeah, I would say I'm five one, but really, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm probably just five foot. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I've worked in all kinds of situations that did not suit me whatsoever. And when I was younger, I would just sleep or not sleep during the night and feel fine the next morning. But now that I'm getting older, I found that my body is just not rebounding over the weekend as well. So even just like moving my mouse and typing, like it hurt to knit. Um, and there were a couple of weeks where I was actually really worried that I was developing tendonitis because the pain just wasn't going away. But I, I got set up with ergonomics in my office. So now my workstation will actually fit me and um, the pain has gone away. So it's been really good for me. Um, but that's all just to say, I know you guys, some of my viewers skew quite young and y'all are gonna be like, well, that'll never happen to me because I feel great. That's what I used to tell myself too, okay? I was you. And then my older viewers will be like, well, no, duh. Like, and I say to you, it took me a while, it took me a while, but I'm getting there. Um, all that to say, please listen to your body. Please take care of yourself. If you are feeling discomfort and pain, chances are like, it. I shouldn't say this. I'm not a medical professional. You should watch Andrea's videos. Andrea, the knitting PT, who is an, uh, who is an actual ther physical therapist. But um, yeah, I, I don't think you should ignore pain. I don't think you should ignore pain, whether it's mental, emotional, physical, whatever, don't ignore it talk about it, talk to someone, a professional, ideally, um, they can help you out. Okay, that's me getting off my soapbox. But yeah, so that's my forever whip. I don't know how long it's going to take me. But it's not about when I get there. It's about enjoying the process. And so far, I'm really loving it. And I just I love how it looks. I, I thought I would like this side more the white facing side, but I actually prefer the the dark facing side more because you get to see the detail in between. I just, I love the look of brioche. I love the texture of brioche. And I'm really happy that I decided to cast on that project. Okay, so those are all the whips that I have. And the rest of the stuff I have to show you is a lot, a lot, a lot of yarn. Um, and where do you get yarn? For many of you, it will be online. It is for me, but also at local yarn stores. So recently it was local yarn store day. I didn't go anywhere because I was still feeling mm. um, But as a treat slash apology for being gone for an extra week, at the end of this video, at the end of this video are two videos of local yarn stores. So one of them is not so local to me right now. One of them is in Korea where I got this. So if you guys remember when I got back from Korea, this is from Panu Story. Um, Panu means needle, so needle story. Um, and this is a, it's a fruit basket of crocheted um, dish cloths done in this, this special yarn that is actually really, it's for dish cloths in Korea. It's, it's what I prefer to wash my dishes in. But anyway, it's this little uh, fruit basket that I'm gonna give to Andrea as like a welcome gift. 
Um, so there will be a clip from Panda's story, walking through the store and explaining what they have very briefly. And then there will be a video from uh, Knit Stars. I love Knit Stars. You guys are gonna see when I get to the video, but like the Knit Stars flagship store. Oh my God, if you've never done it, um, like if you've never signed up for one of their classes or, or anything like that or bought one of their kits, um, they curate their yarns and the store is just gosh darn stunning. Like I don't think I've ever been in a place as beautifully curated as Knit Stars flagship store. And I went because my father and brother live in a very, rare, very rural town called Poto, Oklahoma. Um, and it's a, about a two hour drive from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Tulsa is where Knit Stars is located. I used to go to their store when it was still called Loops, um, but they've rebranded the store and actually relocated to a beautiful location. Guys, I, I've never thought I would be the type of person to say this, but if you ever have free time and you want to take a trip somewhere, go to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I wish I was. First off, this, this area that the yarn store is in is this really, really cute shopping area with like really cool boutique stores, amazing restaurants, amazing restaurants. Um, and it's so cute. I, it is worth going to, okay, I promise. And I know Tulsa, Oklahoma does not sound like a hot vacation destination, but you would be surprised. You would be surprised. Okay, okay. But anyway, at the end of this video, two yarn stores. Um, so I showed you what I got at Panama Story. I showed you guys um, a long time ago what I got in Korea, um, including that little fruit basket. But what I got from Knit Stars, this was actually a very early birthday present. So my birthday is not until the end of July, but my older brother went with me um, and my dad too. Uh, they went to Knit Stars with me because I had to go. If I was in town, I had to go. And um, my older brother decided to get me a present. Um, this was a really big deal for me. Uh, my brother, you guys know, is um, he's autistic. He's high functioning autistic, but he's never been very sentimental or emotional before, or, you know, like he's not classically generous of spirit. So when I joked, I was like, ha ha, yeah, you should get me yarn. He was like, pick something, like, I'll get it for you. And I was just like, what, what? Cause um, I, he said it was gonna be my 30th birthday this year, which it is. Um, so it was a big deal, it was a big deal. And this is what I picked out. Um, I, I thought I was pushing my luck when I got technically two sweater quantities, but I'm using it on one single sweater. So um, I got Surrey sweater quantity and this. So I thought I was pushing my luck, but he was just like, yeah, I'll buy it. And I was like, amazing. Cause I was prepared to pay for one of them myself. Okay, so both of these are from Moondrake. So Moondrake is from Oklahoma as well. So I love the idea that I was buying something local from a local yarn store while I was there. Um, this is her MCN fingering. So it's 80 superwash merino, 10 cashmere, 10% nylon. So MCN in the colorway White Dwarf, White Dwarf. It has these gorgeous highlighter yellow pops with just really cute, bright, hot pink speckling on this just gorgeously creamy white and pink base. And then that's paired with um, this Surrey. So it's 74% baby Surrey um, and 26% silk. It is so soft. Oh, I'm in love. And the colorway is Lu Yang. Lu Yang. And it's this really like subtle green, yellow, pink variegation. I am in love. As soon as I saw these, like this is what I was attracted to. Um, and I am obsessed. And the fact that it was a gift from my older brother and it's probably one of the first gifts he's ever volunteered in my in my life, holy crap, yeah, in my life. Um, so yeah, this is very special to me. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet, but I will definitely cherish it forever because um, it means a lot. And you can see this still is exclusive to Knit Stars. Um, yeah, this wasn't is an exclusive colorway to Knit Stars. This is a not exclusive colorway, but still beautiful. 
and um yeah so that's my moon drake if you guys ever see moon drake i highly recommend you get it because she's great um okay so that's what i got from oklahoma now i will talk about this other yarn from an amazing korean dyer which whom i have talked about a lot but i will continue talking about because she's really lovely and sweet and um this one especially means a lot to me because so cat sandwich fibers cat sandwich she doesn't have um updates very often get on her email newsletter get on her email newsletter that's all i'll say i really love the way she does her newsletter because she actually like she doesn't email you a whole bunch she only tells you when there's going to be updates coming and she includes like a full breakdown of what she's going to have and even like has preview pages which is really helpful if you're trying to plan what you want um especially because she does a lot of non-repeatable colorways um so yeah, it's really great how she does it. Get on her newsletter on her website. It's gonna be linked below. And she's a really sweet human being. Um, so she had dyed up these colorways and she hadn't named them yet. And um, I I just responded to her story when she showed them like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. And then she joked, she's like, do you want me to name them after you? And I was like, ha ha, yeah, that would be so cool. And she'd be like, no, really? And then we talked about it and she was like, actually, if you would be okay with it, do you mind if I would name them after your mom? And um, I wasn't going to say no to that because my mom would have been tickled pink um, having yarn named after her. And I think these colorway, this colorway, um, it's called JJ. My, JJ was my mom's American name. Um, and... I think she would have loved it because it's soft and still colorful and she definitely would have demanded that I make her a sweater in it and she would have wanted us to be matching for sure um, but I I love that uh, that MJ was willing to call this after my mom JJ so it means a lot to me um, so this is the colorway JJ named after my mom on um, MJ's DK base. So it's 246 yards per 100 grams. And as you can see, it is more than beautiful, more than beautiful. Um, and then I knew I had to get a sweater quantity of that, but I certainly wasn't gonna stop myself from getting more because she also had this other colorway that I knew I needed. So this is the colorway Cafe Ole. I'm not even gonna try to rearrange these labels. Cafe Ole. So it's this very, very soft, yellow, creamy, pink, peach. I, I just, I'm in love with it. Like it's definitely more like, Cafe Ole is milk, coffee with milk, right? But it is definitely more milk. I'm not complaining though, it's really beautiful. I just, it, the colorways are so soft. And I think it's gonna be the most beautiful thing. Um, I got this on just her trusty, her regular fingering weight uh, base, which is 463 yards, four ply fingering, 75-25 merino nylon. Um, I have been pushing myself to work with more non-superwash yarns, but for me, I haven't fully committed to making my entire stash non-superwash yet. I know superwash, is not as environmentally friendly as non-superwash. I take some issue with that. Well, mm, this is gonna give me a lot of hate. I take some issue with some of the conversation around superwash versus non-superwash because a lot of it is assuming that we as consumers are responsible for the environmental health of the planet when we actually have a much more minimal impact not even much more, like we have such a minimal impact compared to large corporations that your local yarn dyer or even non-local yarn dyer, they're really making barely a snowflake of a difference. But anyway, also it can get very gatekeepy. Like for some people not, this is why I'm trying to incorporate more on Superwash, but for some people affordability is a huge issue. Then there's the issue of texture for me, I I have tried a lot of rustic yarns that are more environmentally conscious. It is like trying to um, 
you know, like these, the Brillo pads, that's kind of like what it feels like to me to wear on my body. For me, I'm just so sensitive texturally that uh, I want to die. But anyway, that's me on my soapbox. I know a lot of people have very passionate opinions on this and I will no doubt get a lot of comments and messages, but that is my opinion. I am allowed an opinion, even if you think it's wrong and it's probably wrong, but that is mine. Um, the last yarn I will show you is one that I'm so excited about. And I got the really, really basic color um, because I knew that the base would be enough to make it special. So this is from Magpie. I was able to meet the lovely ladies of Magpie at Vogue Knitting Live, and I was very, very nervous. Um, anyway, it's fine. Um, but this is their base, Equinox Sport. So Equinox is 60% silk, 40% linen. Definitely on the pricier side, if you're looking for summer fibers, there are cheaper options for you. But this is something I have wanted to work with forever. And now I finally can because I was accepted as part of Jessie May's uh, test knit group and she used this base and she was offering a 30% coupon with Magpie Fibers um, for the test group. And I know I said I would test less. I am definitely testing less, which has been amazing for my mental health. Um, I'm testing less, but I had to sign up for this because 30% off of a base I've always wanted to try anyway. Like, yeah, sign me up. Like 60% linen, 40, uh, no, 60% silk, 40% linen. So it has this amazing sheen to it. I got it on the colorway Fior de Latte. Um, and it's basically a very, very close to white, but still creamy white. Um, I just, I'm obsessed. Um, the pattern itself, it, I'm going to show you as I work it up, you guys, but I'm really excited to have something so summery in my wardrobe. I kind of want to get more of this in the same base, same color. Equinox, actually, they do an Equinox worsted, so you can do a heavier weight, but in a summer fiber. So if you live somewhere that's less warm in the summer, like, I don't know, Canada? No? Um, if you live somewhere that's less warm in the summer than it is, you know, in Austin, Texas, or even Salt Lake City, Utah, because I live in the desert, then you probably don't want worsted, but if you live somewhere cooler, then yes, you, you can try the Equinox Worsted. And I got Equinox Sport, again, the colorway Fior de Latte, but I am so stoked to try this and tell you guys how it is because I love it so much. It feels so soft and it's, I love summer fibers that don't have that dry feel to them. Um, so can't wait to see how it works out. Okay, that's all I had to talk about at the end of this, oh, this is so much longer than I wanted it to be. Oof. I did have a lot to catch you guys up on. Okay, but anyway, after I'm done talking, um, stay tuned for the two videos. One from Pano Story in Korea. The last bit is from Knit Stars in Oklahoma. And I really, really recommend you stay for that one because it felt as close to a knitter's religious experience as I have ever felt. So... Okay, thanks you guys. Sorry I was away for so long, but I'm back and everything's great. Okay, bye. Hi everybody. I am outside Panu's story. Panu is Korean for needle. And um, uh, we're just gonna walk in. I've already bought everything. I just wanted to show you guys how it looks. Uh, first off, they have a cafe upstairs and they sell bread like Korean bread that uh, has red bean paste filling or custard cream and in the shape of buttons, which I thought was super cute. This is the storefront. Um, Panda Cafe is actually in a really cute area. Oh, sorry. It's in a really cute cafe area. Lots of cute little shops. I've stopped by a couple. Um, so let's just head in. Hi, that's me. And um, when you walk in, you see the big yarn cone wall. They have lots of samples here. There's little doggy samples. People love little dogs in Korea. There is a library section where you can buy books. I know y'all recognize this, but it will be in Korean language instead of English. 
um, they have lots of samples. It's really cool. Um, Korea, I will say, specializes more in crochet than knits. Knits are relatively new, so you'll see a lot more crochet samples. This section is pretty good on the knits, but when you walk in further, when you walk in further, you see more crochet, more crochet. There's some really cool ones, and y'all know I can't, I can't actually crochet. I would love to learn, but I'm like really bad at it. But there's this one. I've never seen this before, and it's super cute. Next to the registers, there's a section for buttons. And then I'm trying to avoid getting people in the shots because um, it's rude. There's all your knickknacks and tools. I'll do a wide pan to show you guys just how big this is. So Korea, the indie dyeing scene isn't as strong as in the US. But you see, it's pretty big in here. Uh, so the indie dyeing scene isn't big, but the commercial stuff, I would say, is higher quality than in the US. There's another wall of yarn here. I'll show you guys the main area that I hung out in. Oh, yeah, they also have a lot of cotton. Like I said, they were like crochet, so cotton's better for that. A lot of mohair. Really cute. I kind of wanted to get these two, but instead what I got was this. Because I thought it was very interesting to have a zebra stripe mohair blend. You walk in more. They have a swatch wall. And then, now I'm gonna teach you something. Okay, so this is a scritchy scratchy yarn, synthetic, and it's used for um, making sponges. We call them susemi. And Korea has these dishcloths, and they make them in fun shapes. You can make them in a classic shape, but they have these kits made. So susemi, are, they're like, they're stronger than dishcloths. You use them basically as normal sponges, um, and they're softer on your pans and uh, plates than sticking them in the dishwasher um but yeah i thought that was super cute that they have little kits and for people who refuse to learn how to crochet like me they have pre-made kits okay. do, 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 do. sorry i'm trying to walk quickly without making you guys dizzy they have little pre-made ones here including those little sandwich shaped ones which i liked ba, 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 ba. the little sandwichy ones here and of course they have one shape like vegetables. I got a sandwich set to give as a gift and I got um, a basket of fruit ones, which I thought were cute. Um, they have needle sets if you need them. Um, people have told me about the Knit Pros. I've never used them. I've heard good things, but maybe I'll try to find a set in the US. I would buy it now, but I am like out of money because I bought, I bought a lot of stuff, including tattoos, but I'll talk about that maybe in another episode. <laughs> um, let me show you guys some more samples. So we have the Mega Gargantuan ones, commercial. But like I said, it's pretty good quality for commercial. I'd use that tweed. And again, I'm sorry you guys are seeing so much feet. I like, specifically I'm trying not to include people in the shot because I think it's rude to just be videoed if you don't consent to it. Lots of really cute ones. I would love to make stuff like this, but y'all know me, I can't crochet. And I know everybody's like, oh, it's so easy. I have tried y'all, I have tried. And then you have a bajillion samples here. I know you guys recognize this one. I think this is the Anker one, the Anker Cardigan by Petite Knits. You'll see some familiar ones, but I really like that they have a variety of colors. And they also combine yarns like this one you can see well they have these protective covers where people usually touch their hands but you can see here this is a mohair combined with two strands maybe three strands this one is just a fingering and mohair held together love that brioche oh looks so good and they have little hats because i know these hats are trendy but yeah that is pano's shop it was definitely, it's definitely off the beaten path in Seoul, but worth visiting if you guys have time. Hello, my lovely followers and viewers. We are somewhere special. We are at the flagship of Knit Stars. 
I used to come here when they were at a different location, but this is their flagship operation store and it is so beautiful. Um, I like cannot get over how pretty this place is. It's definitely worth a visit. If you are ever near Tulsa, Oklahoma, please come because it's stunning. Like it's guys, I can't, I'm just going to shut up for a second just to show you. Okay, so they are famous for something called their Hot Loops wall. Hot Loops is like, they get every season, they get a different dyer in and they curate project ideas. So that's really helpful for people who can't make up their mind about what they want to make. Um, I find it really helpful. Also, you'll recognize some familiar faces. I'm pretty sure that's Noodley Knits. Um, this season's Hot Loops wall is LBA, La Biena May. And they have a ton of samples. They have a bunch of knitting notions and soaks and also a wall of Lola Bean. They actually partnered with Lola Bean to develop colorways that they could just carry in store. Um, they also have trunk shows. I just, guys, this place is huge and it's beautiful. There's so much love for the fiber arts. It's kind of incredible. Like, it's so amazing. There's hedgehog, like there's uh, so many indie dyers. There's also um, more accessible ones like Moondrake. I actually did do a little bit of damage at the Moondrake wall. There's Rowan in the back, towards the back. There's more accessible ones like cotton bamboo, more acrylic stuff. Like there's just so much love for the fiber arts, you guys. It's really amazing to see. I just, they have spin cycle. And knit collage, so much knit collage. And I'm really excited to show you. There's this, a corner for people who um, have children and kind of just want to leave their children someplace. Like they have this little kids area and they have a box of fiber for kids to play with so that they can play with this peg wall. <laughs> Look at that. It's such a cute idea. Like it gives kids something tactile to play with because we all know at a local yarn store, kids tend to want to touch all kinds of stuff. Um, and instead of getting their hands on yarn, they can play with yarn that's meant for them to be played with. I just think it's a super cute idea. Um, I came during knit night. So they have a little knit night group that's on Thursdays. They have a studio space. They have a recording space because Knit Stars is really famous for um, like classes and stuff that you can enroll in. And I just, I think it's such a cute store. There's a huge shipping area in the back. It's beautiful. I really think you guys should make the trip out here because I've never felt so excited about the fiber arts just from coming to a yarn store before, but this is doing it. So please make a visit.